We're going to talk about building the Raspberry Pi Zero motorcycle alarm today on how you can get push notifications when someone's tampering with your bike. There's a lot more uses for this as well, so stay tuned. So let's get started. The kit we're going to use today is the Canna Kit Raspberry Pi Zero W and I'll have links to this in the description with everything you need as well as a tutorial on my website at this link where you can follow along. So we're going to use this kit which includes pretty much everything you need except for the little sensor which we're going to add to the board. Now once you open this thing up it's going to include one Raspberry Pi Zero wireless single board computer pretty pretty neat little deal um, it's a basically a full-blown computer if you've never messed with them HDMI out you've got a SD card port which acts as a hard drive you've got a USB micro which you can do your uh, keyboard mouse all that good stuff processor built into it uh, you can actually attach a camera directly to this board they include a ribbon cable for that which is here if you ever want to add a camera you can actually have your own home surveillance system out of this kit you get one 8 gigabyte SD card and a heat sink that goes on the CPU which we'll be putting on you get one bottom half of a case and they have these in different styles, shapes, colors you can get just about any style you want this is the actual official Raspberry Pi case is why it's this color on the bottom the top is white you get three different covers this one gives you access to the GPIO pins this one is a completely enclosed cover which is the one we'll be using and then they give you one where the camera mounts to if you want to make a surveillance system so it's pretty awesome alright so let's get started we're going to open this thing up and put our heat sink on a little double sided adhesive it's already put on this is thermal tape so we're just going to peel the little blue backing off and firmly plant that heat sink right on top of the CPU just like that okay this thing actually comes with little rubber skid feet we're gonna put these on too may as well keep it from sliding around the table on us you just want to peel them off and stick them in the little circles there nothing too hard about this stuff guys the hardest part's going to be making a little solder connection for this particular project which is also optional there are different ways but I'm going to solder all right so the feeder on we've got some grip heat sinks very important make sure you put that on all right now what we have for our sensor is going to be just a simple little tilt switch nothing fancy about it you get a whole pack of these ten of them for uh, about two bucks I think two or three dollars not much links in the description below so we're going to open one of these up now if you notice this thing has a silver wire and a gold wire now we're going to attach the silver to the ground pin and then the gold is going to go to pin 23 and I will zoom in on this and show you as a matter of fact my working alarm which is already assembled and soldered here now if you look you can see where I've soldered on pin with the ports facing away from you you count from the right to the left one two three that's where the silver goes and then one two three four the fifth one is where your gold pin goes I'll give you a zoomed up picture of that here Now what you want to do is take this little sensor, it's basically just a canister with a little ball bearing in it that rolls back and forth and every time that it completes contact it's going to make the contact on the board for us and our program is going to keep an eye out for that when it senses that this is made 
it sends us push notification. So we're just going to bend these things around just a little bit like that. And we're going to stick them into our board. So we want one, two, and three. This is the ground from the board. And then count one, two, three, four, five, which is here. Now you want just a little bit of space. You don't want it resting completely on the board. Give it a little bit of air around it. You don't want to accidentally get false trip on a different input. Now, once you have your sensor in place here, there's different ways you can attach this. You can flip it over like I did and solder it permanently onto the board and then trim the long leads, which is what I did. If you're not familiar with soldering, find someone that maybe can do it for you or watch a few videos and learn how to solder it. It's an extremely handy skill to have. But that's how I did this. And you may be able to just also bend, bend it over like that. I mean, even if you wanted to, it's not necessarily how I'd do it, but you can also just bend this over and then a little bit of hot glue will hold it in place, keep it from wiggling around. And also the hot glue will not be conductive, so you're not going to short anything out. Once you have your sensor firmly attached to the board, however you choose to do it, let's go set the program up. You get an official power supply with the kit and you want to use that while you're setting up and programming whenever we get to that point. Don't plug it in just yet. Let's go get everything set up. Okay, what we want to do now is go to the Raspbian website and download an image of Raspbian Stretch Lite. I'll put links to all these sites in the description and on my website. And you want to pick up this file here, the zip file for the Stretch Lite. Go ahead and start that download. And while that's downloading, we also want to go to a website called Etcher.io. What this is going to do is burn the image that we're downloading, the Raspbian, to the SD card. Okay, now once you have Raspbian downloading and Etcher, let's also go over and pick up a copy of Notepad++ if you don't have it. Now what this is, uh, it's basically a text editor on steroids. It allows you to write text files and export them as Python scripts and save them as batch files, things of that nature. Uh, super handy to use, especially if you're going to do little projects like this. Uh, and we're going to use this to edit the alarm.py script that I'm going to let you guys download and put on the Pi for the push notifications. And the download link is here. And just pick whichever operating system. There's 32-bit, 64-bit. So make sure you get the right one for your operating system. Okay, now you've downloaded the zip file. Let's open up Etcher. What we want to do is select image. And that's going to be the zip file we just downloaded, the Raspbian Stretch Lite. Select that. Click Open and then automatically it's going to detect our SD card wherever we have it hooked in. So if you don't have that plugged in and put on a card reader yet, go ahead and do that. Mine says the E is my SD card. And when you're ready, just click flash. And what that's going to do is extract the zip file and automatically flash it onto your SD card. As soon as it's finished flashing, it will go back and verify it. All right. Once you have it flashed and everything is complete, unplug your SD card from the computer and wait a few seconds and then plug it back in. And when you plug it in, you should be able to see it right here. It should come up and say boot in whatever drive letter your SD card was. Now, when you get to this point, we are going to create two files. So you want to right click, go to new text document, SSH, and just leave it blank, SSH.txt. And then on this next one, 
we're going to create another text document. We're going to call it WPA underscore supplicant. Now this is going to contain all of our Wi-Fi information. The one thing that we have to do with this is the file extension needs to be changed to dot config or conf and it's going to say change file extension file may become unusable click yes now I'm going to give you guys a link on my website I'm going to package up all these little files um, that way you can just drag them and drop them download the zip and you can have the SSH text I'm going to go ahead and have one named WPA supplicant for you and it's going to contain the commands to actually enter here this is what your supplicant.conf will look like. So you want this information in this file here. And where it says network, SSID equals Wi-Fi name. This will be the name of whatever Wi-Fi connection you want to log into. PSK is going to be the password for the Wi-Fi. Now this is going to be your primary one for each additional network you want to log into as you're cruising around, whether it be your work or parking garage or a friend's house or whatever. Basically just copy this section here and then put a space in between and then repaste it. Put the name of that network and the password for that network and you can just continue to copy and paste as many different ones as you want but I'm going to leave that at one because if you aren't using it for more than one location you really don't need anything. Now these first two lines or three lines here only need to be at the top one time. After that just copy paste network login information. Okay now once you have these two files in you're going to get a copy of this alarm.py script from my site or copy and paste it into notepad which you can do and you can copy and paste this as a new text document and once we get this set up you can actually save as and tell it to save as a Python now this is notepad plus plus this is how many different file formats you can save as it's pretty awesome but you can also like I said I'm gonna have a zip file with this already set up in it we're just going to go and change a few things here. So let's do that now. Let's go to Pushover website. This is going to be the app that we're going to use. Now go to the website pushover.net and go ahead and register for the site. Get your login set up, verify your email, all that good stuff. Now it's free to actually set this thing up. The one thing that you do have to pay for for using pushover is the app you put on your phone okay now once you have all your login and go ahead and download the app it'll give you links to do all that stuff during the registration process now let's go back to all right let's go back to our notepad and if you look here where it says push token your token here and push user your user here these are two things we're going to get from the pushover site. Now once you're logged in you'll see your user key. You will use this in any future program that you want to do. This is going to be your login information, your account information. So you want to copy and paste that long string into where it says user token or user key, your user key and make sure you leave the double quotation marks just copy and paste it right into there now once you have that done <clears throat> and once you have that done we're going to go back to pushover website and where it says your applications create an application API token we're going to click on that and we're going to create an application I have this one just called motorcycle it is an application no description, no URL, don't need an icon, just click to agree and click on create application. Now once you do that you can click on it here back on the main page 
and it's going to give you your API token for that. So you want to copy that, go to your script, and where it says push token, your token here, in between the double quotations, API token key, paste that right there. Okay, now for push methods, you can make this say anything you want. If you want to use this for a motorcycle alarm, if you want to use it for a home surveillance, whatever you want the, the message to say, the text message that you get, just type in whatever. You can make this say anything in the world. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Okay, now once all that's saved, go up here, click Save. If it's already .py, you're good to go. If it's alarm.txt, if you copy and pasted from somewhere, click Save As, and then click as a Python file. All right, now we want to drag this file into our boot drive. And you see I have it here already, alarm.py, WPA supplicant, with our login information and the blank ssh.txt. What this blank file here is going to do is allow us to remote in. Okay, once you have the alarm.py set up, configured, you're signed in to pushover, uh, we want to go to this site here for PuTTY. Again, link will be in the description. Latest version, 0 0.70, download it here. Pick the version that matches your operating system, 64-bit for me and probably most of you guys as well, and download that. Now, once you have PuTTY downloaded, we want to go ahead and remove our SD card. I'm going to do that now. Okay, well, now that the Raspberry Pi, the SD card is in and we've powered it up, use the power supply that comes with the kit for the first time. Give it a good minute or two, maybe three, to let the file system expand and everything get configured. And you can also leave it out of the case and watch the little green light once it's pretty steady. You should be good to try to load in using the PuTTY here. So let's open PuTTY. And we need the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. So you'll need to go to your router and see what IP address was assigned to it and all different router logins are different if you're not sure how to do that go look at the model number ask an adult or whoever is in charge of your router for that information so mine is 192.168.117 that is the IP address I was assigned you see down here I also have one called Z650 that logs into my other one that we already have set up but this is the new one here so now immediately it connected in default login for the raspberry is going to be pi and the default password is raspberry okay there it is pi raspberry pi now the first time you log into this thing it's going to tell you you've not changed the password I've already jumped ahead a little bit and changed the password so you need to type in PASSWD and that's going to tell you to change the password okay now once you've rebooted with your new password it's going to ask you to reboot go ahead and do that and log in use your new password now we're logged in what we want to do is change the name of this from raspberry pi because if you ever are on a network with someone that has a brand new board and they've not set up a new name for the device you're going to have ip conflicts so what we're going to do we're going to type in sudo raspy dash config and that's going to bring this little menu up you can change the user passwords here. We want to go to network options. So hit that, and it'll be the first option for host name. Go there. It's going to give you a little bit of information, and you can see where it says Raspberry Pi. Let's call this Motorcycle eh, 1. And then hit Tab to go to OK. Press Enter. Tab again. 
right arrow to finish press enter and reboot yes and then it's going to tell you that it closed the connection which is normal and give that thing just a moment again to reboot it's going to assign its new name as motorcycle one okay now we're going to do a test let's see if our script runs so what we want to do is sudo python which is the software the code's written in and you want to do space slash boot slash alarm with a capital A because that's the way I have it in there dot pi and if you hit enter if the cursor stays the same you should be up and running it's waiting on a trigger now take your pi and with everything ready let's just give it a little tilt and trip that sensor and we get a message so we know it's running and also if you look here inside of the putty window it says motorcycle alarm all right success okay so now we're gonna log back in log in as pi with our new password and now we're gonna set it up to where our script runs automatically from the start as we power the board up so you want to do sudo space cron tab space dash e it's gonna say no cron tab we're gonna make one now if it opens this up and asks you what editor you want to use before it goes to this screen it'll say options one two and three select option two which is nano uh, it's definitely your easiest option okay go all the way down to the bottom pass all your little pound signs or hashtags however you will call it and I've got your little cheat sheet that I'll also include and we want to add this line right here at reboot sudo slash boot slash alarm dot pi so what that's going to tell it is on power up my bad I left this out sudo python about messed you guys up at reboot sudo python slash boot slash alarm dot pi okay so let's do that now at reboot sudo python boot alarm dot pi at reboot super user python boot alarm all right now what we want to do is control x it's going to ask to save yes and enter okay now the next file we're going to edit since we're not using a connected monitor we're going to make this thing energy efficient by shutting down the HDMI we do not want it to power up so what we do now is sudo nano nano is the text editor that's built into the terminal of the Raspberry Pi slash slash etc slash rc dot local okay now when this comes up we'll scroll down and right above where it says exit zero you want to put the line you don't have to do anything special but I've got it highlighted here where it's disable HDMI if you want to comment that hashtag and then just disable HDMI so you know what it is then hit enter and then do slash user bin TV service space dash zero is off and verify that you've typed everything correctly control X save Y for yes file to write to etc local yes now we're going to exit the terminal and we're going to power down and reboot the Pi and see if it loads our script from scratch so I'm gonna do that now okay we're booted back up now if all is correct I should be able to just tip the Raspberry Pi and I should get another push notification and I did it was really quick okay cool deal well now we're ready to go I can put that thing in the case and hook a battery pack to it throw a little velcro on it inside the bike under the seat 
and whenever I need some notifications, as long as I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, I'm good to go. Now, there's different things you can do. You can use the DC port on your motorcycle if you have one uh, to power the device. I mean, you can do that, but you don't want to forget about it being plugged in because over time it could possibly drain the battery. So what I like to do is use one of these little cellular battery packs, battery backups. This is 2600 milliamp. It lasts for a day and a half on a continual charge with this thing sit plugged in ready to roll so basically what I do I have everything velcroed together so I can just easily put it together stabilize it in the bike and then I also have a piece of velcro mounted underneath the seat onto the base frame of the bike where this velcro this other part of the velcro lays on there and it keeps it from moving around under the seat now with this end pointed up, the sensor will not trip. So basically what we want to do is put this thing under the seat where on the side stand, I'm going to get a notification. When you're on the side stand, the box will be tilted this way. And when someone leans the bike over, and depending how you mount this is going to determine how much of a tip you want to set it off. And it does not take a whole lot. So once you level that thing up, you're going to get a notification in a few seconds just like that. So it's pretty cool. So guys, that right there is pretty much it. Um, you set this up, mount it wherever you want. Now something I did also is I made a permanently mounted and permanently powered one using the power supply that comes with the kit uh, and a different contact. The type of contact I used was one of these micro door switches just like that. It's just a magnetic contact. Magnetic contact you mount the standalone magnet to the door you mount the sensor or the read switch to the frame above the door and on these two wires it doesn't matter which one you hook to where using the same pins ground and 23 one wire to ground one to 23 whenever someone opens the door out there it sends me a push notification tells me that someone's in the building now you can this thing is so compact and small not only can you use it for doors but you can actually monitor a desk drawer anything I mean you can hide this anywhere with a little bit of velcro put these two little sensors I mean if you want to know when that little brother is sneaking into your room while you're at school there you go you want to know when mom and dad's snooping through your drawers there you go you could add several of these sensors in different locations wire them back to this board and you can basically have your own home security system if you wanted and now you don't have to have this. Let's say you want to monitor an entire area. There's a motion sensor that you can put on this thing. Any standard self-powered motion sensor with normally closed contacts. That's all you need. So when motion is detected, those contacts open up and you get a push alert. It's pretty cool. If you have any trouble getting this set up and started, email me here or leave a comment below. Best method is going to be email. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. It is pretty straightforward. The program is simple. As long as you follow all of the instructions as they're written, you should not have any issues. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and ride safe for you guys that don't have motorcycles. Get one. We'll see you next time.